So maybe if we could all take a seat, we can, we can get started. Wait for our good Samaritan who went out to get the more chair, the extra chairs. So wel welcome everybody to the Alpha Lambda Delta and Delta Epsilon Sigma induction ceremony for 2019. Good evening members of the administration, faculty, staff, the 2019 inductees of both Alpha Lambda Delta and Delta Epsilon Sigma, family and friends. My name is Mia Grogan, and along with Dr. Elliot Tamaro, my co-moderator for these two societies, I welcome you to this joint induction ceremony for the Alpha, Lambda, Delta, and Delta Epsilon Sigma Honor Societies. And we're going to begin tonight with the younger members, the, those who are being inducted into Alpha, Lambda, Delta. So Alpha, Lambda, Delta, you see our seal there up on the screen, is a national honor society for freshmen which honors high academic achievement in the first year of college. The purpose of the organization is to encourage superior academic achievement among students in their first year in institutions of higher education, to promote intelligent living and a continued high standard of, living, of learning, and to assist students in recognizing and developing meaningful goals for their place in society. These candidates who are now presented for initiation have attained the high standard required by the National Alpha Lambda Delta organization and are worthy to be recognized both by our college and by the national organization for their notable achievement in scholarship. And students will have achieved this either in their first semester at Chestnut Hill College or over the course of their whole first year here. So we have uh, first years and sophomores with us uh, in this group. I'm going to ask the current officers of ALD, whose names and ranks are listed in your program, to come forward to help with the induction. Okay. Right. So our President Kimberly Croy, Madam President, I have the honor to present to you these candidates for initiation into National Alpha Lambda Delta. Thank you, Dr. Grogan. So, we are here to inform the new initiates about our organization and to ask them to take with us the pledge to make the best possible use of our education. The Greek letters Alpha Lambda Delta are the first letters of the words of our motto Greek, which may be translated, we shall pass our torches on to one another. The insignia of Alpha Lambda Delta represents a lighted candle. Before we ask you to take the ALD pledge, our officers will light candles that represent the values that we pass along to you. The red represents, represents the burning flame of knowledge. The white represents the search for truth. The gold represents the strong base of honor. These are three colors symbolize the standards held by the members of Alpha Lambda Delta. So uh, members of this organization, as I call your names, please come forward to receive your certificates and pins and also a pledge card so you'll be able to recite the pledge with us in a moment. When you return to your seat, please remain standing at your seat until all the names have been called. At that time, we will ask you to repeat the pledge as new members of Alpha Lambda Delta, and I ask that the audience hold their applause until after the pledge has been recited. Jacqueline Alexander, Reagan Baldwin, Alexia Church, Lauren Krim, <laughs> little mistake there. Sorry. <laughs> Colleen Donahue, Lauren. 
Elizabeth Hall, Brianna Hewlett, Brittany Kahan, Corinne Marie Kalala, Lauren Lipinski, Yesenia Maldonado, Justine Mangus, Leah Miller, Connor O'Donnell, Morgan Orlowski, Edmund Salkowski, Aubrey Schifano, Alana Siegler, We're getting it straight. Victoria Speranza. Abigail Spratt. Kerry Sullivan. Yasbel Vasquez Gonzalez. Gianna Vasaluso. Catherine Wheeler, Dalila Zagani. Kimberly, you want to lead them in our oath? I think we've got it straightened out. We've got which certificates now, right? Okay. Okay, please stay standing. I invite all new Alpha Lambda Delta members to please recite the pledge from the card you have just received. I accept membership into National Alpha Lambda Delta, understanding that in doing so, I assume the responsibility of continuing to maintain its standards of service, of diligence, and of integrity. I pledge to promote high scholarship and to use my education for the benefit of my community, my nation, and the world in which we live. Congratulations, let's have a round of applause for the 2019 new members of Alpha Lambda Delta. Okay. Have a seat. Well done. I'm going to invite Dr. Tamaro up now to induct the new members of Delta Epsilon Sigma. Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> Delta Epsilon Sigma is a national association constituted of selected individuals who have a record of outstanding scholastic achievement and who have promoted the intellectual life. Membership in Delta Epsilon Sigma is at once a distinction earned by past achievements and a stimulus to future intellectual work. We are convinced that you fulfill the requirements for membership in this national group of men and women whose motto, signified by the letters Delta Epsilon and Sigma, Dei Epitaten Sophon, may be taken to mean it is the mission of the wise to put things in order. The seal of this society bears the Greek letters Chi and Rho, the first two letters for the word Christ and a lamp which reminds us of the light which shines in the darkness of an unbelieving world. The students we have come together to recognize have demonstrated that they are capable 
of great academic accomplishment and thus also of hard work. To these students, much has been given. Of them, much more is expected. These individuals recognize the great challenge which is theirs. The world of service to others is now at their hands. Students being inducted today into Delta Epsilon Sigma have fulfilled the requirements of membership and have been invited by a committee of Chestnut Hill College faculty, staff, and administration to join Delta Epsilon Sigma. As I call your names, please come forward to receive a letter of welcome into Delta Epsilon Sigma. When you return to your seat, please remain standing until all new members' names have been called. At that time, we will ask you to affirm the principles for which Delta Epsilon Sigma stands. And I ask that the audience hold their applause until after the pledge has been recited. As I call your name, please come forward. Kira Ann Altamari. Stephanie Bragna. Caitlin Coogan. Matalsh Chibatal. John J. Day III. Destiny Hollock. Francis Maniscalco. Jennifer Miller. Hajra Najam. Amy Nguyen. Haley Norwillow. Elena Ortiz. Alexia Pert. Erin Rafferty. Jessica Scallon. Samantha Tomlinson. Sarah Jo Tucker. Isabella Vicino. We now ask you to affirm the principles for which Delta Epsilon Sigma stands by responding, we do, to the following questions. One who loves wisdom knows that it can be gained only through long and persevering labor. Do you seek wisdom through such labor? We do. One who truly loves wisdom desires that all share in the gifts that wisdom brings. Do you seek to use wisdom for the service of all people? We now welcome you into this society of distinguished students, graduates, and faculty who have enjoyed the privileges and accepted the challenges offered to them. With a round of applause, congratulations. <laughs> It is now my pleasure to introduce our speaker this evening, Sister Marie Leahy, Assistant Professor of Education here at Chestnut Hill College, to say a few words. Sister Marie has her undergraduate degrees from Ursinus College, certificates of theology, art, and elementary educational instruction from Immaculata College, a master's in multicultural education from Eastern University, and her doctorate of education in school administration and K through 12 leadership from Widener University. Her scholarly interests are on the effects of parental mental illness on students and student achievement. Curriculum and instruction, classroom management, multicultural education, and literacy. We are happy to invite her here tonight at the suggestion of our Alpha Lambda Delta chapter president, Kimberly Croy, an education major for whom Sister Marie has served as mentor. Please welcome her. First and foremost, uh, I want to say congratulations. 
and thank you for having me. Um, I really am honored to be here and humbled. If my college had a chapter of Alpha Lambda Delta, I can tell you that I would not have been invited. Uh, what you have accomplished is truly worth celebrating. As you know, uh, I work in the education department here at Chestnut Hill College, and my job is basically to train students to become teachers, actually excellent teachers. One of the classes I teach is called Adolescent Development, and one of the topics we spend a considerable amount of time on is transition, because students encounter many transitions throughout their academic lives. From grade school to middle school, from middle school to high school, and from high school to college, just to name a few. And as teachers, we need to help ease the transitions so students can be successful. All transitions come with a certain amount of challenges and obstacles. In a way, those are unavoidable. Even though we prepare students to go from one school to the next by hosting social gatherings of incoming students and allowing them to pick their schedules, giving them a map and a tour of their new school, letting them figure out how to open their lockers and inviting them to meet their new teachers, actually moving from one school to the next is difficult at any level and college is no exception. Actually, although you were older and wiser when you graduated high school, and you had already successfully navigated several previous transitions in your life, the move from high school to college was still a major leap. In addition to academics, you had a plethora of other issues to face, physically, psychologically, socially, spiritually, and perhaps athletically. When you began here at Chestnut Hill College, there were so many new beginnings. Being an emerging adult, you were expected to handle so many challenges, and I'm sure that wasn't easy. No matter how much preparation you had at some point you were going to have to walk into the cafeteria by yourself and figure out where to sit and with whom. You were going to have to figure out who your friends were going to be without someone setting up play dates. You were going to have to figure out if you would follow the crowd or forge your own path. You were going to have to look deeply within yourself to see who you really are and discover who you are going to be. Not an easy task. I want to share with you a short excerpt from one of my favorite books. Does anyone remember Madeline? Ah. I realize this is a children's book, but as a philosophy major, um, I learned that it is often in the simple that we encounter the profound. Anyhow, let me read you my favorite part, which comes at the very beginning of every Madeline book. In an old house in Paris that was covered with vines lived 12 little girls in two straight lines. They left the house at half past nine in two straight lines, in rain or shine. The smallest one was Madeline. As a little girl, I can recall looking forward to reading this book over and over, and I sense many, have you, many of you have done this too. For some reason, it always brought me comfort. I found it quite soothing. When I taught first grade, my students seemed to feel the same way about it. And they smiled and cheered every time I walked over to the bookshelf to select it as a read aloud. It wasn't until many years later that I reflected on what it was about this book that I found so appealing and that children 
still enjoy today. Madeline is predictable. Every book starts exactly the same way. In an old house in Paris that was covered with vines lived 12 little girls in two straight lines. No matter what predicaments Madeline gets herself into, we know everything will always work out in the end. Even the rhyme scheme of the book adds to the predictability of the story. It's the same reason we are drawn to fairy tales as children. They're predictable, and predictability is soothing and reassuring. They help us feel like we are in control and can face adversity and accomplish anything. We like things that are predictable, don't we? Predictability gives us a sense of empowerment. When we know what's coming, we can be prepared. It's only natural. But no matter how much you prepare to come to college, the transition was still enormous on so many levels. Earlier I told you that if my college had a chapter of Alpha Lambda Delta, and maybe they did and I didn't even know it, I would not have been included. I had been a very good student in high school and a very good student later in my college years, but I had an extremely difficult time during my first few semesters in college. I didn't do well with transition like you did. Life was far from predictable for me and I was really thrown for a loop. So it took me quite a while to get my footing in college. I really, truly wish you a heartfelt congratulations on your achievement. You did it. You navigated this notoriously difficult transition and you thrived. And that's to be commended. Your hard work, drive, and persistence are truly inspiring. For those of you in Delta Epsilon Sigma, I'd like to offer my congratulations as well. It's generally known that the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. So the good news is your success at Chestnut Hill College is a wonderful predictor of what's to come in your future amidst yet another life transition from college to young adulthood. Remember, even if you have to pick up one of your favorite childhood books to refresh your memory, you are empowered and you are in control to face whatever new obstacles and challenges lie ahead. And you can accomplish anything. Undoubtedly, you too will thrive. You've already proven that. So in closing, I urge you to wear the name of Chestnut Hill College proudly, for we proudly claim you as our own. And I'll end my remarks in the same way many of the Madeline stories end. That's all there is. There isn't any more. So congratulations. Thank you so much, Sister Marie. That is one of my favorite books, too. So it's great, great to hear you bring that into the story here. So on behalf of Chestnut Hill College, uh, I wish to express to the new members of both societies our pride in your achievements, as Sister Marie was saying. Thank you to all who have gathered here this evening to honor the new members, the family and friends who have joined us as well.